the first thing that we have to do around here is the first part is deliver air power. We've got to support the, tw the 24 hour, seven day a week combat operations that's getting after the fight in ISIS. So that's the number one thing is deliver air power. The second thing that we want to do is develop innovative airmen. And we, we need to do that constantly either through PME or, or learning skills or the uh, continuous process improvement program so that we can get guys that are smarter because we don't have enough people, we don't have enough money. So if we can find a better way to do something, I think building an innovative airman is the way to go. The third thing that I want to do is build a good team. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is um, there's all kinds of parts to a team. It's not just selecting people to play on the team, but it's, it's building infrastructure so they can get things done both on and off work and take care of them uh, both on and off the job so that uh, the team is taken care of uh, in all facets of their life. And so that's what we want to do is build a good team so we can, we can work together well. So with the chief, with what he wants to do with the revitalations of the squadron, um, in 2016 they came out and said this is something we want to do. So they looked at – a bunch of the additional duties and try to get rid of a lot of those and so of the 61 additional duties that we have that we had back then now 29 of those have gone away uh, unfortunately the rest of those were piled upon the uh, uh the css uh organizations within the squadrons but when you look at a lot of squadrons they don't have the manning for the css piece so i think the the long uh, tooth in the tail is to get some people in the seats and so the good news is the Air Force is committed to, to about 1600 authorizations around the Air Force to include 170 officers 469 enlisted personnel and another 961 civilians to try to get after that problem uh, however it's going to take a little bit of time probably a couple of years before those people actually show up and materialize at the squadron level so I think when you look back at the vision of developing an innovative airman that's what we're going to have to do in the interim just to get after that is, is be innovative with how we approach that so that we can get it done until those people actually show up. On July 10, 2002 a C-5 from uh, Dover left uh, uh, he left over for Kabul, Afghanistan, with 13,115 pounds of school supplies collected by children from about 58 American schools. I think this is one of the moments in history that show uh, the humanitarian side of the greatest military on earth and the greatest air force on earth. And I think as we move forward here in a bit, we'll talk about some OIR accomplishments. Uh, it's good to remember that, that our country also provides relief and support to our allies and our friends. And uh, we're just not a kinetic force that's going around blowing things up all the time. So it's pretty cool. Pretty big week, really, in NOIR. There's, there's some, uh, we had quite a bit of strikes, uh, so 161 strikes in Syria, 37 strikes in Iraq, uh, 204 targets in Syria, and 335 in, in Iraq, both uh, either damaged or destroyed, and really a total of about 200 sorties uh, that we put down there with over 500 targets getting hit. But I think probably more importantly, uh, the news of the week has been that uh, early this week on 9 July, the Iraqi Prime Minister traveled to Mosul, uh, and he declared it liberated from the Islamic State after really three years of turmoil uh, for that city and its people. And uh, Lieutenant General Townsend, who's the CJTF uh, OIR commander, uh, was quoted as saying it's some of the toughest urban environment fighting he's ever seen in his career. And so I think uh, that says a lot about what the guys are doing. And I think Raqqa uh, in Syria is the next one that's going to fall, uh, the next stronghold that ISIS has that's going to fall. So it looks like the tide is turning for the good guys in the war. So. Well, uh, I guess the first part of that is it's tough to teach an old dog new tricks. I'm not sure I'd be ready to make that jump just yet. But uh, I think the idea of the Space Corps was sort of created in a congressional subcommittee, and it's obviously taken a little bit of resistance from uh, the DOD. Uh, General Goldfein, the chief of staff of the Air Force, he kind of opposes the idea of creating another service, um, specifically the Space Corps, uh, because, uh, and he's really not alone in those defense circles. General, uh, former General the Secretary of Defense James Mattis also is skeptical about the idea. He noted that creating Space Corps was premature at this time and uh, opposed adding an additional organization and administrative tail to the Pentagon right now. It doesn't mean that we won't change in the future. Uh, obviously, if Congress uh, votes to establish another service, I'm sure we'll be on the hook to get after it, regardless of what the Department of Defense reservations are about the idea. So we'll just have to kind of wait and see it, see if it how it turns out. And I think if uh, I were to cross commission into, into the new Space Corps, uh, I would have to say I'd want to be in the rank of captain, kind of like Captain Kirk on Star Trek. Uh, I was never a big Star Trek fan, but I, I always thought Captain Kirk had a great leadership style. He always seemed to be calm and collected and a step ahead of everyone on the ship. Um, and, uh, and also the beings that he encountered kind of around the galaxies. And he was in charge of the Enterprise, which I thought was pretty cool. He traveled around the globe or the galaxies doing all kinds of cool stuff. And he seemed to have a great freedom of command. And uh, I think that's all a commander can ask for. So I think I'd, I'd want to be Captain Kirk, I guess.
Well, I hope everyone enjoyed the uh, 4th of July celebration that we had uh, this past week. Uh, I thought it was a pretty cool event, and um, obviously a lot of work went into that for uh, the FSS team. So it was great to see a lot of people out there having a good time with the live concert and the fireworks and all that. And then uh, I'd also tell you, hey, you know, I, we're asking you guys to work a lot. We're, we got you busy. I'd ask you, uh, kind of like we talked about golf a little bit, get yourself something to do that you enjoy outside of work so you can have some of that balance in your life. Um, and then uh, kind of kick back and relax when you're not at, not at work. This is an incredible place. The Lick is an incredible place to be assigned to. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, if you're deployed or assigned here, you're supporting that 24-7 uh, combat mission, which is, which is quite incredible. But at the same time, you got things like a golf course, you got a pool, you got a BX, you got a commissary, you got a club complex, you got a couple of restaurants around the base. You got one of the newest movie theaters in the United States Air Force that you can huh? go check out a movie. So uh, I would say, uh, you know, find something you like to do and, and have some balance in your life.